Happy New Year everyone! I am kicking off 2020 with a brand new video and kind of a new style of content. I'm going to be implementing more of those conversations over coffee that I mentioned last year. I only uploaded one video where I sit down and kind of talk one-on-one, -on -one, but today I do have a story to tell you guys. And if you clicked on this video, you kind of already have an idea on what this video is going to be about. It is going to be why I decided to buy my plane tickets to fly across the country in just three hours notice and how I pulled it off. So I know that the title does sound a little outrageous, especially coming from me. I'm the kind of person who spends at least three months planning a trip minimum. I'm just a planner. That's just the kind of personality that I am. And so just the idea of booking a plane ticket the same day as a flight, let alone with a three hour advance notice, definitely kept my stress levels pretty high. Before I explain why and how I pulled it off, I want to step back and kind of give you a little bit of a background on what's been going on in November. So for those of you who don't know or have seen my previous videos, my fiance Lucas is currently deployed in Afghanistan. He is projected to return back to the States to come back home around spring of 2020. Back at the end of October, we found out that there is a soldier that needs to be escorted back to the States from Afghanistan. Why they decided to choose Lucas to be the escort for this soldier was beyond our control, but we weren't going to question an opportunity that fate provided to us. Even when we found out that Lucas was going to be the escort for this soldier, we didn't even know how far he'll be escorting. He could be sent to Germany or to the East Coast or to Texas and be asked to turn around. But if the plan was that Lucas were to escort this soldier all the way back to Texas, we were thinking of ways to try and fly me out to go meet them in Texas. At the time, it was four months that we've been away from each other, so any time back we would appreciate. As the days went by, we were just kind of crossing our fingers and keeping our hopes really high that there would be an opportunity to present itself where I could potentially go and see him. But once he received his flight information to Texas, they found out that the medical services that the soldier needed were not provided in Texas and actually the nearest hospital on base that provided those services would be Joint Base Lewis McCord and that is in Washington. On a completely random chance Lucas was chosen to escort this soldier and on an even more random chance he was sent back home to Washington. So in early November we were reunited with open arms and the fullest of hearts. The only downside being is that we didn't know how long he had to spend at home. The entire time he was here every day we spent together we were just worrying like is this gonna be his last day here is he gonna have to hop on a flight tomorrow morning is he gonna hop on a plane that night we just had no idea what the plan was to send him back but we did know at the end of the day that he was going to be sent back at some point so what did we do we decided to just take advantage of the situation we went ahead and went to visit with family it was a very foggy day but I got to show him where our wedding venue will be we got to try some cake flavors together we went on mini road trips together we drove over to Mount Rainier and we went up to Seattle another day Day and went to Pike's place. We even got to purchase our wedding bands over at Bellevue and then spent his last evening in Washington at our favorite restaurant in downtown Seattle. Although it was only just a few days back home, it was still time back that we got with each other. And what was even cooler is that it happened halfway through the deployment, which is a blessing that I will always be wholeheartedly grateful for. It's kind of like a little break, you know, like he was away for four months and then there's like a little break and then he'll be away for another four months and then he'll finally be home. So when the day came that he did have to return back to Afghanistan. He had his flight booked for Wednesday evening, but he had a stopover in Baltimore. When he arrived in Baltimore on Thursday morning, he found out that there is no plane yet to send him overseas and that the next plane wouldn't fly out until Sunday. So that gives him four days of just waiting around in Baltimore by himself. So this is where the title of the video comes in. We decided to fly me over to Baltimore to go meet him. So just to provide some specifics here, we found out the news that he didn't have that plane to take him overseas around like 8.30 in the morning on Thursday. And as soon as I found that out, I went ahead and looked at flights leaving that day. And there was one that was going to leave at noon. With stress levels very, very high, I decided to quickly pack a backpack. I didn't even bring a suitcase, just a backpack. And I asked my dad if he could take me to the airport. And he was like, yeah, sure, when? And I was like, 
now. He laughed really hard and he went ahead and drove me so I could purchase my tickets in the car. So this is like 9 a.m. So my flight was leaving in three hours. Most of 2019 I was traveling pretty frequently so I have a packing list on my phone. I quickly just took that out, packed my backpack with things that I needed, and then ran out the door. On the way to the airport I was even checking on my phone what the wait times were at the security lines. And on my phone it claimed that it was just 10 to 20 minutes so I felt like it would just be easy. I could just go rush right through. I just had a backpack Pack, but when I got to the airport, I was met with 45 minute wait times. Yeah, I was gonna miss my boarding time. So, quick life hack and tip for you guys if you ever find yourself in this situation ideally you won't, but again, life has a way of throwing some curveballs for you. Sign up for clear. I know that not all airports have this service. I think it's found in over 60 different airports in various venues, but luckily SeaTac did have this service. And what it is, is just a service that would be really convenient if you travel pretty frequently. Instead of bringing your travel documents with you, like your passport or your ID and showing those to TSA, Clear has an exclusive line that you would go ahead and go to, which almost always doesn't have a line. The service uses your irises of your eyes and your fingerprints to identify you. It is a monthly subscription, so I would highly advise you to really use your best discretion to see if it fits your lifestyle But it was something that I've always just seen whenever I went to the airport and considered But since I always got to the airport with so much time in advance I never thought that it would be something that would be sustainable in my life However in this one circumstances, I did decide to give it a try Luckily it only took a couple of minutes to sign up and it does have a 30-day free trial So if you try it out and you like it then great But if you don't and you don't think it's gonna be sustainable for your life You do have that 30 days to decide decide to cancel it before your card is charged. That being said, thanks to Clear, I was able to get through security very quickly and got to my gate right when boarding started. I even had time to purchase a couple of snacks as I ran to my gate. So noon came and I found myself happily in my plane, nestled in, ready to watch some movies. I did have a stop over in Denver, but I was able to make it to Baltimore by 10 p.m. that evening. Real quick before I move on and talk about my experiences in Baltimore and Washington, D.C., I just want to highlight the things that really helped me get through the airport at such a short notice. So number one, obviously, I spent a good time talking about it, is clear. It is a great way to get you through the security line and at your gate in a convenient timeline. The second thing that I think really helped me is having my dad easily able to jump in the car and drop me off. That was really helpful. But if you didn't have a family member that is ready, I highly recommend Uber, Lyft, or public transportation even. I think those are usually accessible in most cities and so hopefully those could be ways of transportation for you to get to the airport quickly. That way you don't have to worry about driving your car, parking your car, paying for your car, and kind of all that. The third thing is I always have a packing list ready on my phone for different types of adventures. I have a weekend packing list. I have a week-long packing list. I have, you know, a day trip packing list. I just have these things on my phone so that way if the trip does come up like this, I'm able to just quickly pull up my phone and know exactly what I need. And so those are the things that definitely helped me get to my flight in time with such short notice, but I would highly recommend booking your flight way more in advance than I did but again if you find yourself in this kind of position and you're kind of at a loss and you kind of have to figure it out I would recommend those three things to help you get to your flight. Now on to part two of my video I just wanted to quickly talk about my adventures over in Baltimore and Washington DC in case that you ever find yourself in those areas and kind of ideas on what to do when you're there. And I didn't vlog, and I apologize for that. I only have some pictures and some phone video clips that I'm gonna throw in here and there to kind of supplement this story time, but I didn't bring my camera when I went to go fly to Baltimore. It's not like I forgot it. I intentionally decided to leave it at home. I wanted to focus on spending time with Lucas before he goes back to Afghanistan instead of trying to vlog it all. Day two, we spent in Baltimore, Maryland. We didn't have an agenda, obviously, given the short notice, and neither of us have ever went to Baltimore before, so we went ahead and Google searched some ideas on what to do. It looked like a lot of the like touristy stuff that you could do in Baltimore were usually in the inner harbor area. So we went ahead and called up an Uber to take us to that area. Something that I always do when I'm on a trip, I like to ask my Uber driver or Lyft driver what they recommend us do when we're in a new city. They usually have better ideas than what Google search can provide. And so our Uber driver suggested that we could take a train over to Washington DC on Saturday, which is what we ended up doing. But in Baltimore, he recommended that 
we go to the National Aquarium and he recommended us to check out his favorite part of Baltimore which is known as Fells Point. It's kind of right along the river and has his favorite restaurant, Thames Street Oyster House. He claims that they have the best blue crab cakes in the city. So we decided to just give his agenda a try. Fells Point is a beautiful part of Baltimore filled with lots of life. There is nightlife there too, but even during the day you're able to really enjoy the beautiful cobblestone roads that kind of really give the area a lot of character. It complements the brick walls very well. We kind of spent the evening walking around watching the sunset until our reservation over at Thames Street Oyster House. We went ahead and ate cast iron crab cakes, lobster flatbread. We also ordered some oysters from Massachusetts. I I do admit that the East Coast has the best oysters. We decided to go to the National Aquarium. As our Uber driver mentioned, it was half price after 5 p.m. on Fridays. So we took advantage of that. In addition to that discount, they also gave us a military discount, which was very awesome of them. We went ahead and spent the rest of our first day in Baltimore with the turtles, the sharks, the fish, and the dolphins. The next day, which was Saturday, we decided to take a train over to Washington, D.C. This was our second time riding on the Amtrak, and so we were pretty used to the idea of that, and it was only just 20 minutes, so we decided, why not? Lucas has never been there before. Let's check it out. Once we arrived to the Union Station, we went ahead and Ubered to the farthest point of the National Mall that we wanted to see, so that way we can just start walking back towards the Union Station by the end of the day. Our first stop was the Lincoln Memorial. I was able to visit Washington, D.C. maybe like six years ago something around something along those lines I think it was like five or six years ago I remember that the last time I was at the Lincoln Memorial there's just this feeling that gives you chills when you get to see where Martin Luther King Jr. stood and gave his I have a dream speech there's just something about seeing that space kind of just gives you chills and just is a completely unexplainable moment so it was really cool to be able to see Lucas go through that experience for the very first time and then we got to of course see Abraham Lincoln statue in the memorial the next stop is the Washington Monument that's directly across from the Lincoln Memorial. We went ahead and decided to grab lunch at one of the very conveniently located hot dog stands on our way to the White House. And then from the White House, we took our quick picture and got in line for one out of the two museums that we got to explore that day. The first museum was one of the Smithsonian Institution Museums called the National Museum of American History. We spent about maybe an hour at that one and then we went ahead and got in line to go see the second museum of the day and it's the one that we were anticipating the most, which is also a Smithsonian Institution Museum, National Museum of Natural History. And this is the one that we were the most excited for. They have a dinosaur exhibit, they have an ocean's creatures exhibit, as well as a mammals exhibit, and it was probably the highlight of our entire Washington DC adventure. What's really cool about the Smithsonian Institution Museums, if you're ever in the Washington DC area and are looking for things to do, they're all pretty much family friendly and they also have free admission. So it's just a great way to spend your day on a budget. By the end of the day, we were exhausted from all the walking that we did, so we happily made our way back to the train station to ride back to Baltimore. We were actually so exhausted that we ended up just buying Olive Garden and, and used Uber Eats to deliver it to our hotel room. And then the last day, and truthfully, it's a little bit more difficult to talk about, we spent the entire day at the airport. My flight wasn't leaving until 5 p.m. and then Lucas had to report in the morning to find out what flight he was getting in the evening. His flight didn't leave until 7.30 p.m. We just kind of kept reminding ourselves that we were given time back that we weren't really supposed to get. Like it wasn't in the plan that he were to come home halfway through the deployment. It wasn't in the plan that I was gonna go to Baltimore with him. We just wanted to go ahead and focus on all the blessings that we were given Given, rather than kind of drown in the idea of him having to leave again for another few months. So yeah, whether or not you were just curious on how I was able to pull off buying my plane ticket three hours before the flight, or maybe you made it to the end of this video and enjoyed hearing about some things to do in Baltimore or Washington DC. Regardless, thank you for sticking around to the end of my conversations over coffee story time. I promise I'll actually drink a coffee during one of these at one point, but the point of these kinds of videos is kind of to provide different kinds of content for you where I get to sit down and kind of just chat with you as if we are two friends 
friends at a coffee shop catching up. All of this to say too, despite the stress that I had booking the ticket in such short notice, I am so, so grateful for the opportunities that Lucas and I were given in November and I cannot wait to welcome him home with open arms in the spring. I'm also really excited for all the content that I have planned for 2020. It's going to be a little bit different. I won't be traveling as much this year, but I do have some ideas for lifestyle content. I have some deployment video ideas and some wedding planning ideas. There's a lot going on this year that I'm so excited to share with you. I know it's cliche to ask you guys to subscribe, but honestly, that's the best way to figure out when I'll be posting here soon. I'm going to try and get a more consistent schedule going throughout the year, but for now, that is the best way to figure out when I'll be posting next. So look out for those videos, but until then, I will talk to you guys soon.